What's up everybody, this is Danny. And Holly. And welcome to our updated Smart Kitchen Tour for 2022. We do have some new stuff to show you, but I want to talk about how things have held up long term since last year's tour. I don't think people talk about this enough, so I'll go over how the Samsung appliances have been performing in the last two years. But first, I want to talk about an update to our smart lighting from the channel sponsor Legrand. If you just look at this quickly, you might not be able to tell the difference because of the same super clean design that the Radiant Collection is known for, but this collection now has the power of Netatmo built in, and that changes the way that this system talks to each other, and it's really neat. If you're looking to just upgrade a few smart switches around the house, then you're probably better off with going with just the classic Radiant Collection. But the reason to go with Legrand with Netatmo built in is because it has the entire home in mind. And this is great for multi-story homes or larger homes with lots of smart switches installed like I have in my house. I have them all throughout the upstairs and I have them in my kitchen. The big difference is first you'll install a smart gateway and this will be the brain and main connection to your Wi-Fi router and this has to be wired in so I install this one closest to my router which is inside this closet. Then all of the switches that you install are now connected to this gateway and that's important because it creates a relay and now a mesh network throughout the entire home. So the more switches you install, the more robust your connection becomes. Having multiple switches creating a Zigbee mesh helps with performance, especially with switches that are far away from the router. And I'm finding these to be faster and more reliable. And most importantly, it's taking the stress off of my Wi-Fi network. And you also get the benefit of a really easy setup. The new switches just get detected. And with just a few taps, it's added to the network. The next level thing about the system is that it introduces wireless switches to place wherever you want. So I have a wireless switch that turns on my kitchen lights from the garage when I come in. You can just use 3M tape that's included and just stick it right on the wall with no wiring. And any switch that's connected to the system can now be controlled wirelessly. So that's just mind blowing. They are battery powered, so I know what you're going to say. I don't want to be switching out batteries every month, but these are super low power and the batteries can last up to eight years, so I wouldn't worry about it. Now, what I love even more is there are wireless automation switches that you can add like this home and away switch. When I leave my house, I can just hit this away portion of the switch and have it shut off all my lights, or I can customize the action on the Legrand Control app. So if I wanted to leave a few lights on, I could do that too. And this awake and sleep switch is really convenient as well. The app gives you a good amount of options such as managing the entire home with control over every switch. You can create groups and set up home and away and wake up and sleep scenes easily. You can get smart notifications if you forget to turn off a light for a certain amount of time. You can create action schedules to turn on and off the lights at certain times. So you get everything that you would expect from a modern lighting system and more. Plus the compatibility is great too because you have Amazon Alexa support, you have Google Assistant, and and you also have HomeKit support, so you'll have no problem with integrating this into your smart home. For more info, I'll leave a link down below. Make sure you check it out. They also have a more modern adorned design, which I didn't think would quite fit this space, but it does look really cool. So the main design of the kitchen is still the same, but we've made a couple of cosmetic inexpensive changes just to kind of switch it up a little bit and give it a bit of a refresh. So the first thing we did was we took the island, the painted part, and we just painted it black just to give some contrast and then we switched out the old cream chairs that we had um, for these black chairs that we got from article we also changed the dining room table uh, we had like a farmhouse style table there before didn't fit the look of the house um, so we've changed that and the chairs both of those are from article too and we also put a new chandelier in which i think is just fits a house a lot better now we also changed the hardware on the cabinets uh, these were an Amazon find and they were really, really inexpensive and I think it just transformed the kitchen. Before we had the brushed nickel and it just blended in too much with the grey, so I think this is given it a little bit more contrast. If you want a more in-depth look at the appliances that we have in our kitchen, you can watch our previous kitchen tour. We go over that more in depth, but today I'm just kind of going to go over how they've held up over the last couple of years that we've had them. The first little change we've made is we switched out the stainless steel Simple Human automatic soap dispenser for a white one. And we still have our Cola automatic tap. Came in handy then with that soap. This we've had for over two years 
and it has held up fantastic. The only downfall I see with it is when we're making like pasta or anything where there's hot water and steam, uh, the steam actually activates it and it will set it and it will go off by itself. But besides that, it's been a natural lifesaver in our kitchen. So this is actually a smart tap and it connects to Alexa. But if I'm being honest, I don't really use it. Um, it's just easier to do one of those. You can also turn it on and off manually as well if you want to, but who wants to do that when that's more fun. <laughs> and it looks nice too. It really, uh, no, I actually really like the way it looks. That's why we changed the, the poles on the cabinet too, to match the tap. Could never have too many chargers in our house because one of Danny's pet peeves is my phone is always dead. So we're lucky to have this wireless charger in our kitchen right here just pop it in and it's charging also we have the echo show 15. now when danny first showed me this and pulled it out of the box i thought he was insane this is like a little tv in our kitchen and i was like no no no, we're not having that uh now couldn't live without it it's i find myself watching the bachelor whatever <laughs> while i'm cooking so danny doesn't have to listen to it on the tv but it's coming really handy because the kids will sit at the island sometimes and they can watch something while they're eating uh and it's really easy to use so easy in fact addy our daughter she is constantly coming over here and hitting the encanto soundtrack we don't talk about bruno <laughs> we're still using the samsung family hub fridge it's three years old at this point and as a fridge, it's been phenomenal. We've had no complaints with the cooling. Um, I still love that it has the little drawer in the middle for the kids' snacks. The only complaint that we have is the ice maker. Now, we've seen the complaints online, people talking about their fridges just packing in completely or the ice maker not working completely. Ours works, but it is painfully slow. Like, you almost don't want to use it. It's so slow. So that's, that's probably the only complaint that we have about the fridge. When it comes to the, the whole screen functionality and all the different apps and stuff they have on there, in my honest opinion, we don't use it, probably to its potential, but that's because we have the Echo Show 15. It's almost repetitive because you have the same functions on here as you would on there. You have more on there probably, but we tend to use it to showcase our beautiful children. There is a positive side to the screen and the tech inside of this fridge. You do actually get a bunch of software updates. We get them constantly. And I think one of the most recent ones was they actually included Alexa in the fridge. So if you don't have an Echo Show 15, you can actually use this in lieu of that. But just for convenience, I find it easier when I'm on that side of the kitchen just to use that instead of this. So the rest of our Samsung appliances, we have the hood, the range, we have the microwave down here, which is also an oven, and we have the dishwasher. They've all been fantastic. They've all held up great. Uh, maybe because we order too much Uber Eats and don't really use the oven. No, I'm kidding. Oh, what? <laughs> no, they've actually been really, really good. Um, we've got the dual oven here and we've used it many a times, especially like Christmases and stuff like that. It's come in really, really handy. Um, but yeah, they've, they've held up fantastic. Again, I know a lot of people have kind of complained about the quality of Samsung appliances. We just haven't found that personally with ours. Okay, so we added some new smart kitchen tech and we're gonna start with the fanciest toaster that I've ever used. I like it because you can choose whatever you wanna toast. There is a ton of different options from bagels to English muffins. You can toast it all fresh or frozen. Then you can just pick the desired toast level here and then you just hit start and that's it. So while it is neat and it will be a show off piece when friends come over to the house, but if I'm gonna keep it 100% real, this is definitely not worth the price tag that they're asking for it. Are you ready? This thing costs $350. There are even higher end models that go for more with the Panini accessory, but a $20 toaster will pretty much do the same thing without a touchscreen. I did pick this up for about $100 less around the holidays, so I'm gonna leave a link below to everything that I show you today because you never know when they'll go on sale, so you might as well check current pricing. The second thing added is something that you probably already know about, but man, have I been missing out because this is my first sous vide setup. This is the Innova Precision Cooker Nano Circulator, and I ended up buying this container as well to keep it easy, but you can just use a regular pot if you want. You don't need this. 
If you're not familiar with the sous vide method of cooking, it's basically using a circulator like this one that heats up the water to a certain temperature and keeps it at that exact temperature the entire time to precisely cook the meat or vegetables of your choice. So this means you can't technically overcook it no matter how long you leave it in there. Now it can change the texture of the meat depending on the time that you leave it, but basically it's fail proof. So what makes this smart is that it's Bluetooth connected. There is a Wi-Fi connected model as well, but I didn't see the need because this works perfectly. So I thought I would save some money and I haven't regretted it. It's super easy to pair and the app has a ton of recipes. Whatever you are cooking is easy to find. And when you're cooking something like a steak, like I am here, you just pick your desired temperature and the time is already predetermined by the app. And once you hit start, that's pretty much it. You will need some type of sealed bag solution. I decided to go with the Anova Vacuum Sealer Pro. It comes with the roll already and you can just cut the bag to size. You just insert your food and it vacuum seals it and gets it ready for the circulator. The tight vacuum seal is key to the cooking method and you can infuse flavors into it like fresh garlic and herbs too. And trust me, when you cook the meat and vegetables this way, the tenderness is incredible and it can actually make cheaper cuts of meat taste way better. So if you haven't tried this method yet, I would. This is less than a hundred bucks and cooking tender meat has never been easier. When it's done though, it will throw you off because it doesn't look that great when it comes out of the bag. So what you wanna do is you wanna dry off the meat and then sear it to give it that flavor that it needs. So this is a perfect time to show you the Heston Q Smart Induction Cooktop. I know a lot of you wanted me to try out induction cooking and this is my first induction setup. And so far, I'm really impressed. I love how compact this is, so I'm able to sear this meat outside. The precise temperature control of this is great for it. But of course, you can just sear with any pan or a cast iron skillet for the best outcome. But look at this after the sear. It looks fantastic. But remember, you need to sear the meat after sous vide. The Heston Q is almost like cheating because when it's connected to the app, it just takes you step by step how to cook that certain recipe. There's a battery here in the handle to keep it connected to the app and the burner so they can speak to each other during recipes. All you have to do is follow directions and the temperature is controlled automatically during the entire cook so it's really hard to mess things up. I think a lot of people will like this, but the only thing is that not just regular pans will work. You'll have to get induction compatible pans, so you may have to get new cookware. But I definitely need to use this more to see if I'm going to invest. The heat up is so quick and it's more energy efficient, so I'm enjoying it so far. So another piece of connected cooking that is definitely cheating but awesome is the Brava Smart Oven. I've never used anything like this before and it's one of my favorite additions to the smart kitchen because it's super easy to use and it has a camera inside so you can see the food cooking in real time. This oven is different because it uses light to cook. If you look inside, you can see these lamps here and that's what makes all the magic happen. And there are some major advantages to this cooking method. First, there is no preheat at all. You don't have to wait for it. As soon as you hit start, it just starts cooking right away. Second, the lamp sit at individual zones so you can cook three different things at three different temperatures at the same time and that can make full meals really easy. And I can't lie, I wasn't a believer until I started using it. There is a temperature sensor included as well so you can insert it into your protein so the Brava can cook the meat to the exact desired temperature. And you can control the cook and recipes on your smartphone if you like, which is great. But I love that there is a touchscreen right on the oven itself so you don't have to use your smartphone. You can customize what you're cooking. So if you're cooking filet and you want to, let's say, add some sprouts, you can definitely do that right here. Again, you can't really mess this up because it tells you exactly what zone everything is supposed to go into. You put the thickness of your meat, the desired temperature. I mean, it's all right here. And then you just hit start and then that's it. So this oven is Wi-Fi connected, so you can monitor and control your cook from the smartphone. But most importantly, this gives software updates so it gets new recipes all the time. There's even a setting on here that if you buy Costco pre-made meals, that you can just put it in here and it has the exact temperature and cooking method to it. So this can't get any easier. So the thing that I really appreciate about this is that it's really easy to clean up after cook and you don't have to do a lot of maintenance. You don't have to clean the lamps. So I think this works really well in larger kitchens, but it's perfect for smaller size apartments, maybe studio apartments. So if this is something that you're interested in, I would definitely give this a try. So this next one isn't smart because it's connected, but because of the design, I know everybody's seen air fryers before, and I even showed you a Wi-Fi connected air fryer in the last tour, but this one 
has two bays that can be individually controlled and that saves a lot of time. If your kids are picky as ours, then you're probably just doing a lot of chicken tenders and fries, corn dogs and crap like that. And this makes things so much easier to just cook them at once. And since you have control of temperatures on both sides, you can cook for the entire family. I guess the only downside is that the baskets are a little bit smaller, so you can't cook like big chickens or anything in here. I've seen people cook some crazy things in an air fryer. But if you're just cooking for a smaller family, this will definitely work. So I like the fact that you can cook wings on one side, curly fries on the other. That's the combo right there. We've been using a new pressure cooker as well, and this is Wi-Fi connected. And it's one of the easiest ones that we've ever used. I think it's better than the Instapot, but I think we'll save this for the next one. So if you have any suggestions on what we should add to the Smart Kitchen, definitely let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this one, hit that thumbs up, subscribe for a lot more Smart Home videos, and we will see you in the next one.